Today, we're going to engrave on pencils. Yes, we're going to put names on pencils like this. And I'm gonna show you how we get perfect alignment on those pencils with our pencil jig. If you just wanna see the pencils engraved, then skip to that time in the video. But if you wanna see how we made and how we use this pencil jig, then make sure that you watch the whole video. To make this pencil jig, we're using a piece of eighth inch MDF. This is actually cut the size to fit a Glowforge because this is just what we have in stock. But you could use pretty much anything that you wanted to to make a jig out of. It could even be cardboard. We like using something like this because it is a little more permanent. Now, let's jump over to the computer and let me show you how we set this file up so we can cut our jig. So first off, we've opened our file in Illustrator just so I can show you all of the little text boxes are here. And then the blue part is actually just a guide to show you kind of where your pencil would sit. Um, the little space over here is for the eraser if you kind of want these for right-handed or the space over here if you're going to put your erasers onto the left-hand side. But anyways, the text is here. But now let's open this same file in Lightburn. So once we import our file into Lightburn, you will see it looks like this. Now you'll notice that there are no text uh, layers here. That's because we did not make outlines of the text. We're not doing anything with the text at this point. We are just going to make our jig. You will also see that it has an orange outline. We wanna click on that. We're gonna change that to tool. That just represents our piece of material, which is our 19 and a half inches wide by 11 and three quarter tall piece of MDF that we're using for this jig. The next thing we want to do is we want to delete these little guides. So we'll go to the layer that is colored blue here and we will just tell it to delete. So now we don't have those. We are left with our tool line. We have our cutouts here and then we also have our registration or our crosshairs. So the first thing I want to do, we're gonna click on our crosshairs. We're gonna go ahead and move this up. And this is the settings that we use for like scoring this uh, MDF or just marking it. We're not going to really cut through it. Um, so we have 300 millimeters per second at 50% power. We also have a minimum power set for 2%. Uh, you may have to adjust that some, but so we are just going to be lightly scoring these marks to help us line the jig up later, which I'll show you. Now for our cut layers, this is our settings for our eighth inch MDF, we're using an 80 watt um, Thunder Nova. So yeah, this is for our 80 watt machine. We have our speed set for 25 millimeters per second at 60% power. That will cut out our holes for the pencils. Now that we have all of that finished, you will notice our little green uh, box up in the left hand corner of this. That's because we are going to start our laser from the current position. So make sure that current position is checked. And then the top left corner, that's just where we normally start a lot of stuff. So we're gonna make sure and line that up right there. You'll see why in just a minute. So we're going to go ahead and send this to the laser. So we're gonna click send. We can go ahead and rename this pencil and then click okay. And that is sent to the laser. So let's hop on over there. So we have our full sheet of MDF loaded in here. I am going to pin it down. I am using these pins here. I'll leave a link in the description to where I get these. I buy these off of Etsy. They work pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and just pin it down just a little bit to make sure it stays flat. Once we have it pinned down, I want to drive my laser head to the very corner up here. So I'm just gonna move it. And I have that laser head. You really can't even see the red dot because it's right on the corner there. Once I have that laser uh, dot right where I want it there, I'm gonna go over to the controller and I'm gonna press the origin button so I can set an origin. Now that the origin is set, I do wanna make sure that I focus on this. And I'm using a six millimeter guide here to make sure that I'm focused where I need to be. And I'll hit escape and it moves back to my origin point. Now I'm ready to load and run the file. <laughs> mm. 
Now our jig is finished. By the way, if you want the file for this jig, it is available on Etsy if you need something like that. So now we're in Adobe Illustrator and we're going to edit these names. The first thing I'm doing, since we're using an AI file, I'm going to go ahead and lock all of these other layers except for the text. That way when I try to grab the text, I'm not grabbing anything that I don't need to. So uh, you can go in here and you can just use your text tool and change the text to whatever you want to. So we'll just type out a name here, Chloe Malone and you can type each one of these or you can copy this and then go to the next one and paste it or you can actually do something else. You could go up to edit, find and replace and you could find the words your text here and you could replace it with Chloe Malone and then so you can tell it to find and you can tell it to replace all and all of them will be changed automatically. So that is a time saver if you're wanting to do all of those. And I talked about the blue layer being the little placement guide. If you wanted this for say a left-handed pencil, you could take the names and then go ahead and move all of these over to the left-hand side. And that would be the placement for a left-handed pencil. But we're actually only going to do one dozen today. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of those and I'll delete the bottom. We are just gonna work in the top right hand corner for this illustration. The other thing you can do is you can change the font. So we'll highlight all of those. So we're gonna use a font called Noteworthy Bold. Now that we have the font change, we're going to right click on these uh, while they're all selected and create outlines and then I'm gonna go over to Pathfinder and click Unite. So that way all of those are united together there. Now I'm going to unlock the rest of these layers. At this point, you actually could go ahead and delete the placement guide layers and also your pencil cutouts. If you wanted to, you want to make sure that you leave your outline and your crosshairs, but we'll probably just turn those layers off in our light burn. Now make sure that you save as, that way you don't overwrite your original jig file. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put this under Chloe's name. I'm gonna leave it on an Adobe Illustrator file, depending on what type of laser, or whatever you have, you might want to change it to something else, but we will leave it just like this. Go ahead and click save. Now that we have it saved, let's open it up in Lightburn. Now we have it open in Lightburn and we can go ahead and get rid of these layers that we're not going to use. So as far as the placement layer, we can actually just trash that. And we can even get rid of all of these cut layers. So we will take these and we will get rid of those as well. So now we're left with our crosshairs, our text and the outline. You could delete the outline if you wanted to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and keep it. Um, it's a tool. It's not going to do anything. And we're going to use our crosshairs here. And we're going to turn this output off. So make sure your output is set for off because you're not going to need to engrave these now. We're just going to use it for an alignment. So instead of starting our laser in the upper left hand corner, which is what it is set for now, we want to go over here and we want to make sure our start from is on current position. And then the job origin, we want to move that to the center dot here. We're going to start it right on that middle crosshair. We go over here and take a look at our power settings. This is the power settings that works for these pencils on our Nova 35 80 watt machine. We're going to engrave this at 600 millimeters per second. We're going to use 50% power. And the line interval we have set for 0.08. So now all we have to do is send this to our controller. So we can go over here and click on send. Tell it OK. And now everything else is done over on the laser. So now let me show you how we load this in the laser every time we get ready to use it and how we get it straight. And then we'll engrave some pencils. OK, we're going to go ahead and put the laser jig in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this laser head over to this crosshair on the right hand side. I'm not worrying about too much right now. I'm just going to go ahead and move it over here. So we've actually just moved this laser jig around 
until the red dot is right in the middle of the crosshair. Once you have that lined up, go ahead and use one of your laser pins to pin down your material right there. Now that this side is pinned down, we actually just want to move the laser head straight to the left. So we'll use the controller, drive the laser head right over here. And now all we have to do is move our jig just a little bit here to we want to make sure that now we've moved the corner of this jig to where it lines up right in the middle of that crosshair. And once we have that, go ahead and pin this side down. Now, if we didn't move it too much, it should be in there exactly straight. So we're going to go ahead and move the head over to just make sure. It's lining up there in the middle and it lines up really good right there as well. So the next step is to go ahead and drive the head to the middle. Now that we have the red dot right in the middle of the center crosshair, we go to our controller and we press origin to set an origin. Now we just need to load our dozen pencils in this top right hand corner. To do so, you can move your laser head out of the way now since you have your origin set. So we've got the laser head moved. Now we just load our pencils. Since the pencils are right-handed pencils, we load it with the racers over here on the right. We like to take the text side there and turn it down and then uh, just make sure the pencil is slid over to the right hand side. So just go through these and make sure that all of these are loaded the correct way. The other thing, make sure that you have a flat part up on the pencil. That way you've got a good space to engrave on. Now that we have a dozen pencils loaded, the next thing we need to do is focus our head on the pencils. And we have these little focus blocks. These are 3D printed blocks. These blocks are actually six, seven, and eight millimeter blocks. So we're going to focus at six millimeters. I'm just going to lay this block kind of across these pencils here. Now we need to drive the laser head over to that focus block. And you just wanna make sure that the laser is right on it so we can raise the bed up just a little bit. And now we're gonna lower the laser head down onto the block. And that should have us focused right at six millimeters on these pencils. Now just move the block carefully. Make sure everything is still lined up. And now we can hit escape and that should take us back to our origin point. Now we're ready to load this file on the controller and tell it to start. That took one minute and five seconds. Just gonna slide them out here. The pencils are finished and we got them all packaged up and they're ready to be delivered. By the way, we sell these engraved pencils on our website. We sell them for businesses, for teachers, or for that child in your life. Hopefully you have found something in today's video helpful. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until next time, God bless.